What is going on guys, Will here, welcome to the video. As you can tell by the title, we're gonna be going through a full week of my training. I'm gonna show you guys all the workouts I do, the sets, the reps, the exercises, how I program everything. Everything that I do, you're gonna find out in this video. Quick disclaimer guys, I'm not a science-based guy. I'm not Jeff Nippard. If you can't already tell, I'm pretty sure I failed science class in high school and I don't know the EMG activation of, of shit. So I'm just throwing that out there for you guys. I'm just a kid who likes to lift weights. I pick things up and put them back down. I've tried bro splits, I've tried upper lowers, I've tried push pull legs, you name it, I've done it. But what I'm gonna show you guys today has got me into the best shape of my life. So hopefully you guys can learn something in the video today and apply it to your own training routine. So without further ado, let's get this video started and let's go grab that whiteboard. So I just wanna go through a quick little overview of the program before we get into the nitty gritty details of everything. So the first thing is I train four days a week. I go Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I take Tuesday off as well as Friday and Saturday so I can go out and party. <laughs> okay, um, Sunday and Wednesday, I will do chest, back, and biceps. Monday and Thursday, I'll do shoulders, legs, and triceps. Most of my routine is based around compound movements. That is a multi-joint movement, so I don't do a lot of isolation exercises. Um, I don't like chest flies, birds fly. We don't need to fly also. So compound movements run in three week blocks. So my blocks look like this. Week number one, I come in on my compound, for example, a bench press, I'll do four sets of 10. And then the next week I'll come in when I do bench press, I'll do four sets of eight. And then the third week, my last week, the heavier block, I'll come in and do a five by five. And then once I finish my first three week block, the goal is to then come back, restart the four sets of 10, but then I wanna add two and a half pounds to five pounds to the bench press. Um, two and a half pounds to five pounds, it's because depending on the lift, you're not gonna be adding five pounds every three weeks. And if you are, you're probably injecting some syringes in your butt. Goal is to add weight each wave and then keep on doing it as long as you possibly can. If you're doing that, you're in a good spot. Next up is I auto-regulate my sets for isolation movements. What does auto-regulate mean? Auto-regulate means you kind of just do more work if you feel better. So sometimes when I go to the gym, might not really feel that good, might have a bad sleep that day. So I might just do the minimum three sets and just be finished with it. But if I feel really good, um, I've eaten a lot of food, I just feel strong, the movement feels really good that day, I'll push it, maybe I'll do five sets of curls, five sets of lateral raises just really feel it out and that's what I like to do. Um, isolation movements are not the same progression method as my compound movements. What I do for this is I usually pick a rep range that I like for the movement, like anywhere from like maybe like a 10 to 12, a 12 to 15. And the goal is to just fill out all, so if I'm doing three sets of 12 to 15 for lateral raises, I will not increase the weight until I can do three sets of the higher end of the rep range. So unless, until I can get to three sets of 15 of lateral raises of like, for example, 25 pounds, I won't graduate up to 30 until I get all sets of 15. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, quick overview, and now we're gonna get into day number one. It's Sunday, day number one, which means it's chest, back, and biceps day. I'm on week number two of my block, which means it's a four sets of eight day because last week I did four sets of 10. So for chest and back, I like to kind of rotate between the two. So for example, if I start with the bench press today, for example, the next exercise after that will be a back exercise. So while I hit my chest, my back is recovering. And while I, while I hit my back, my chest is recovering. So it's kind of like a push, pull, push, pull, repeat. Exercise number one, we're doing a standard traditional bench press, not close grip, not touch and go, just straight sets, bench press. Next up, after that, we're gonna do a neutral grip chin up for four sets of eight, just like the four sets of eight for the bench press. So I like to do the neutral grip chin up. It feels the most comfortable for me. So that's with the palms facing inward. I've done the supinated ones before and it just destroys my elbow, especially when you get really heavy enough. So yeah, I love the neutral grip chin up the most. I then after that, we'll go back to a chest exercise because chest back, and then we go back to chest. I'll do incline dumbbell press. So yes, incline dumbbell press is a compound movement but doing the four sets of 10, four sets of eight, and then going to a five by five with incline dumbbell press kind of seems weird to me. So I kind of just do four sets of 10 to 12. I'll pick a weight where I can uh, work up to get to four sets of 12, and then I'll add five pounds. So that's what I've been doing with the incline dumbbell press. I'll then go back to a back movement. So I'll do the deadlift row. It's not a very popular movement. I haven't seen many people do it, but I found it on Brian Allsrue's channel. I'll link his uh, channel in the description below. He is a strong man. I learned a lot from that guy. He's a really, really good dude. So you guys should check out his channel for sure. Yeah, so he introduced me to the deadlift row. It's kind of like a pendulum row, um, but not as strict as a pendulum row. So you're basically starting off the floor every rep and you're deadlifting portion of the way up, up your shin and then you're pulling into a row. I love it. So I've been full, I've probably been doing this for a couple of months now and I've noticed significant upper back, lower back strength gains and muscle gains as well. 
So that's my chest and back, and then I'll finish off with an isolation exercise. So three to five sets of 10 to 12 reps with the reverse dumbbell preacher curl. I will do one arm at a time. So I like to do it on the reverse pad when my arm is like on a dead hang. It just feels better. I feel like I get more of like a mind muscle connection as people would say. And yeah, so that is my workout. Probably takes me anywhere from an hour, hour and 10 minutes to finish it if I'm just really in the zone. Um, I don't really track my rest times. I don't like really put it on my Apple watch like a minute or two minutes. I, I just go when I feel like I, I can go because I want to make sure I hit all my all my reps. I don't want to miss reps because then it'll kind of throw my whole programming off. So just be sure if you're following something like this, you don't overestimate the weight. Um, if anything, kind of taper it back, leave some reps in the tank and make sure when you come back up to the next, so when you do four sets of eight again, you add some weight. So that's day number one. All right guys, what's up? So you guys know I like to cook. I make some healthy recipes. I come up with some pretty sick ideas, I know. And I think I found something that's pretty cool so I wanted to share it with you guys. It is a high protein snack that if you have a sweet tooth, you're gonna enjoy it. So what it is, is it's basically like an ice cream sandwich, but it's not ice cream, like, I'm sorry. So what it is, is I got three quarters of a cup or 175 grams of non-fat plain Greek yogurt. And then I went and got fat-free, sugar-free pudding mix. Uh, I put eight grams of that in with the yogurt, mixed it all up. So it comes out to like a kind of like a frosting, thick consistency. And then I went to Costco. Costco is just the goat and found these things called Pizzelle or Pizzelli's, whatever you Italians want to call it. They're basically 23 calories per cookie. They're really good. They're kind of like a waffle kind of thing. Make them into little ice cream sandwiches. Then I pop them in the freezer and Probably should wait. Oh. Yeah, so you gotta wait a little bit, let them kind of relax, and then you get to eat them. What's up guys? So it is day number two. It is Monday, the second day of the training block, and we are be doing shoulders and legs. I don't have triceps on Monday. I don't do direct tricep work on Monday because I feel like on the Sunday yesterday when I did the bench press, and today I'm gonna be doing overhead press, I'm getting a lot of indirect tricep work that way. But on the Thursday, I will do some sort of isolation movement for my triceps. So today we're gonna to be doing legs and shoulders like I just said, and we are gonna be starting off with legs. So we go legs, shoulders, legs, shoulders. Again, we are rotating each muscle group per exercise to give it a chance to recover. So I always start off with the main compound movement for my whatever body part it may be, and that is me the barbell back squat. You can do whatever squat that you want. It could be a front squat, it could be a goblet squat, it could be a box squat, really whatever. Any squat is good. So four sets of eight because we are on the second week of the first block. After that, I will then go to the standing barbell overhead press. It is my favorite exercise of all time, and I attribute a lot of my shoulder gains from this movement, so I do four sets of eight of that as well. Uh, I really wanna emphasize that every single rep that you do, you dead stop on your chest, reset, and then press up. A lot of times I see people kind of stopping like right here, and you're leaving a lot of progress on the table. After that, um, we then go to the barbell Romanian deadlift, which is the main compound movement for our posterior chain and our hamstrings. Again, four sets of eight. Be sure that when you go down, the weight goes to your heels. Once you feel the contraction and the stretch in your hamstring, you then come up as quick as you can, squeeze the glutes, repeat. After that, we then get into the isolation movements. Again, three to five sets. We auto-regulate them. 12 to 15 reps. So this is kind of like the higher rep work for my shoulders. Um, so the lateral raise movement that I've been really enjoying lately is when I put my head on a wall or a pole and you kind of slightly lean forward. And what that does is it keeps you locked in position. It keeps you honest with the movement. A lot of times when you see people doing lateral raises, you see a lot of swinging and a lot of use of momentum. And you just really want to isolate the shoulders. And I find that when I use my head on the wall, the progression is very honest. After that, I finish off with some face pulls. Again, three to five sets, 12 to 15 reps. I do this for my upper back, rear delts, uh, shoulder and ro rotator cuff health. And that is pretty much day number two. Uh, very basic, not a lot of exercise selection, but guys, the basics is all you need. So I'm about to head over to Orange Theory now. So Orange Theory is what I do for my cardio. I do it anywhere from three to five times a week. Five being the absolute maximum. It's basically high intensity interval training for an hour straight. I burn anywhere from seven to 800 calories when I do it according to the uh, heart rate monitor that they give me. No, it's not 100% accurate. But I know a lot of you guys hearing this, especially the men are like, Will, you're doing so much cardio. It is killing your gains. What are you doing? You're wasting so much time. Guys, just because girls can't see your heart does not mean you shouldn't train it. It's not all about the biceps, the chest, the shoulders. I understand 
understand where you're coming from. I used to be there, but guys, doing cardio will indirectly help you in the weight room. I promise you, it will give you the opportunity to push more in the gym, add a few more reps, more stamina, a healthier heart, you're gonna lift some more weights. So we're gonna head over to Orange Theory, but we're gonna do one quick pit stop first. All right, so the overwhelming majority of you guys told me that the pre-workout I need to try is Total War. I've never tried it before, so I'm gonna do a taste test and review of it right now and let you guys know what I think. So the ingredient profile is I probably don't wanna know, but yeah, it's, it, seems quite, it seems quite potent. What's the flavor of this one? It's called Tiger's Blood. It's like a sangria. How's it taste? Like Tiger's Blood. Like Tiger's Blood, right? Yeah. It's actually pretty good. It's not actually Tiger's Blood, so it's vegan free. So, I'm gonna go do Orange Theory now and I'll let you guys know how I felt at the end. So I give the Total War probably a solid nine out of 10. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion, guys. Okay guys, so it's Wednesday, day number three of the week, and we're onto our second chest, back, and bicep workout of the week. And instead of flat bench press, we were starting off with the incline barbell bench press today because who doesn't want bigger upper titties? I know I do. After that, we then move on to a back movement, chest back, chest back, just like last time. Um, we're doing the lat pull down. Again, I like to hold it shoulder width. I don't like to go too far out. It's a little bit harder on my shoulder joint. So I do again, three to five sets of 10 to 12 reps. After that, I will then move on to the barbell floor press. I really do enjoy this movement. I find it a little bit safer on my shoulders and I feel like it really helps me with my lockout strength on my regular bench press as well. So I'll do four sets of eight of that. After that, I will then go on to my main heavy row of the day, which would be the T-bar pendule row. Um, so it's basically just like a barbell row, but I bring my own attachment to the gym. Yes, Will, the type of guy to bring his own attachment to a gym. I then put it on the T-bar row. Every single rep starts dead stop on the floor. Row up explosively, reset on the floor every rep. Four sets of eight. After that, I then move on to like more of the higher rep work for my back, more hypertrophy work of three to five sets of 10 to 12 reps with the wide grip cable row. So I use the lat pull down bar and I hold it wide grip. Um, and then I pull it right to my nipple line or my sternum and back. So lean forward, pull back. Um, I find it really helps with my upper back and tr uh, trap development. Like who doesn't want vein traps? I know I do. After that, we then just finished off with a few sets of hammer curls, three to five sets of 12 to 15 reps to work on the brachialis and the thickness of the arm. And that is pretty much day number three. Okay guys, it is Thursday, which means it's the final workout of the week and we're on the second shoulders, legs and tricep workout. So today we're gonna to be starting off with the barbell push press, four sets of eight. So the push press is very similar just to the standing overhead press, but the only difference is you are using leg drive, which will be able to allow you to use more weight. So it is a very good full body exercise because you get a lot of leg activation from the initial push up. After that, I then go into my main lower compound movement of the day, which would be the trap bar deadlift, which is four sets of eight. And then I go back to a shoulder exercise. So I do the standing one arm dumbbell press, um, three to five sets of 10 to 12 reps. This is just to get more volume on my shoulders after the push press. I like to hold onto like a bar or like a pole. Um, and I, I'm very strict with the form on this exercise. I make sure there's no jerking in my legs, just very strict up and down. After that, I then go back to a, another leg exercise. So I do a bar, uh, dumbbell walking lunge, three to five sets of 10 to 12 reps, 10 to 12 reps per leg, not in total. Um, this one really burns, I love it. Very good for the glutes as well. After that, I then go to leaning dumbbell lateral raises. So this is the second time I do lateral raises in the week. So the first time I did it, um, was a little bit higher rep, 12 to 15. So now I'm doing a little bit heavier. So this one is I'm holding onto a pole I kind of lean to the side and I'm using a lot of momentum to get the weight up because it's a heavier day. So eight to 10 reps for that. And then I just finish off with, um, because I didn't have um, initial um, tricep isolation on the first day. So I then do something for today for my uh, triceps. So I do a standing dumbbell overhead uh, extension with the dumbbell. Um, Whenever I do a tricep isolation, I always do something over the head to work on the long head of the tricep because it's the biggest head of the tricep. You get the biggest bang for your buck and it'll give you the appearance of a bigger arm. Um, for this exercise, I usually keep my arm not very tight to the side because that's just a one-way ticket to tendonitis. So it's okay to have a little bit of a flare and just focus on the stretch and then up and down. Again, three to five sets at 10 to 12 reps. And guys, that is pretty much my full entire week of training. I really tried to simplify this video for you guys, make it as short as possible. Hopefully you guys learned something in it. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.